A few weeks ago, I made a video on Dr. John McDougall's sanity because it was highly questioned by some of the less than reputable dimwits on the internet today that call themselves carnivores. And as some of you may know, I engage with as much people as I can in the comment section of my channel, whether you're a biased dimwit who just follows the words of one dimwit to the very intelligent people who do rarely comment on my channel and everyone else in between. I try to engage as much as I possibly can because this health, nutrition, and moral dilemma that surrounds the ideology of veganism is a subject that I believe must and is much needed to be discussed. So a few days ago after I posted the Dr. McDougall video, I noticed a comment that was on my channel that I thought was very well worded. The comment was from a fellow who goes by the YouTube slash Google name of Matthew Porter. Now, whether that's his real name or not, I don't know and it's besides the point. Now Matthew Porter and I went back and forth for a few days and he expressed some great points that I agreed with. Matthew Porter also expressed a few points that were his opinion and are unfortunately not backed by science. And before I proceed, let me just clear the air here. This is not an attack on Matthew Porter or any meat eater for that matter, as he has been nothing but a gentleman and he seems like a really nice guy who's trying to learn more in regards to nutrition and health and have some type of open dialogue or at least some type of civil discussion about vegan and or a uh, omnivorous lifestyle and uh, the moral and ethical dilemmas behind that and the dietary implications of following uh, a lifestyle of your choosing. With all that said, let's begin. So as I said before, Matthew and I chatted back and forth about the ethical and health dilemmas against and for veganism. Matthew did a great job in keeping his comments short, which he did on purpose, has he stated because he didn't want to make a 5,000 word essay in the comment sections of my video as he expressed, which I don't blame him. So kudos to Matthew for being considerate. So in the midst of our conversation, I was inspired to make a response video to some of Matthew's comments just to make it interesting since what Matthew stated is actually in line with what most people say, at least in regard to the health aspect of a whole foods plant-based diet or a vegan diet. Matthew stated a few reasons why he is not vegan because I asked him why he wasn't since he seemed to have put some thought into veganism and he responded with the following. I don't agree with making specific conclusions from weak and uncontrolled epidemiological studies. I would agree that a plant-based diet is likely healthier than a modern Western diet. I don't agree that meat is unhealthy. I don't agree that a plant-based diet is healthy for all people in all stages of life, especially children and to a lesser degree, the elderly. I don't agree that plant-based dieting is better for the environment or even kills less animals. I don't agree with anyone claiming to know the perfect human diet based on extremely weak archeological evidence. I don't agree that animals have rights, but I do agree that if most people, myself included, experience negative empathetic emotions towards any abject level of suffering experienced as a result of animal farming practices, it's worth reviewing and changing said practices. Before I begin, let me just say that this is an abbreviated response from Matthew since he was trying to keep his response short. So I can probably bet that Matthew can definitely expand on any of these topics and he probably certainly will do so after watching this video if he gets a chance to watch it. So just keep that in mind and I guess let's just take it from the top. I don't agree with making specific conclusions from weak and uncontrolled epidemiological studies. I think we can all agree with this statement as population studies do not prove causation, but they are a pretty good clue. This is why a body of evidence that includes epidemiological studies, meta-analysis, randomized controlled trial studies, and metabolic ward studies, if they are available, need to be presented to fully understand what is the cause of a certain effect. With that, Matthew also stated that he doesn't believe that meat is unhealthy. And this is a very common misconception that I too myself used to believe. So when we ask if a certain food item is healthy or not, 
it's probably best to compare it to another food item and when comparing it to something else we also need to account for the substances in these particular food items that are making them healthy or unhealthy for human consumption. Is meat healthy compared to beans? Is meat healthy compared to donuts? Is an all meat diet better than an all plant-based diet? Is a meat diet that is mixed with some plants better than just an all plant-based diet? These are all questions in the air that have yet to be answered if you don't want to account for population-based or epidemiological types of studies as Matthew doesn't seem to agree with for some valid reasons. So the best we can do is look at the substances of what formulates meat. For the sake of this video not being too long, I'm going to be talking about the three most commonly consumed meats in Western civilization, beef, pork, and chicken. I will also only be taking account for only certain cuts of each of these meats and not every single cut of meat as that will make this video go for way too long. So if we look at beef, pork, and chicken, we can see that just one four ounce piece of any of these dead animal parts has more than one gram of saturated fat, more than 87 milligrams of dietary cholesterol, and over a gram of methionine for each piece of meat and no fiber. To start with, the upper tolerable limit for consumption of dietary cholesterol, saturated fat, and trans fat is zero. Any type of meat that I just listed already far exceeds the upper tolerable limit of any of these substances because all animal flesh has all three of these substances. The upper tolerable limit is set to zero because consumption of any of these substances has shown to raise serum LDL cholesterol levels, an established risk factor for heart disease. Any LDL cholesterol level reading above 70 milligrams per deciliter promotes atherosclerosis and increases a person's risk of suffering from an atherosclerotic event. So not only have higher consumptions of dead animals been associated with a higher risk of dying based on population studies or at least getting sick, but also consumption of saturated fat and dietary cholesterol has been proven to raise serum LDL cholesterol levels. Having a higher LDL means you'll be at greater risk and animal foods are loaded with these three substances, hence why consuming them increases your risk of having an atherosclerotic event. Methionine is an essential amino acid, but it's an amino acid that doesn't need to be consumed in large amounts as cancer cells and tumors have absolute requirements for methionine. Now, I'm not saying to completely eliminate methionine out of one's diet to avoid cancer, but it's clear that too much consumption of this essential amino acid puts someone at risk and Animal products are loaded with methionine, so much so that just one four ounce chicken breast puts someone over the recommended daily limit for methionine. So you can imagine if someone is eating animal products three, four, five times a day and just loading up on this sulfuric amino acid can probably keep cancer cells quite stimulated. Meat products also have these bacterial toxins that are known as endotoxins. These endotoxins increase inflammation in the body which promote cancer. So being in a state of chronic inflammation by whacking your digestive system with dead animal parts three times a day is only further progressing a person's chance of damaging their organs, arteries, and cells due to these inflammatory endotoxins. Heme iron is a mineral that is found in animal flesh. Heme iron has been associated with promoting cancer. I know we hate that A word, but stick with me here. It seems the mechanism that causes or at least promotes cancer with heme iron is the body's inability to block absorption of this animal-based mineral. Heme iron itself promotes pro-oxidant activity, which can to lead to oxidative DNA damage, which promotes you guessed it, cancer. Let me uh, take a breath here. God, is, is that enough? 
to prove that animal products are not healthy. I've, I've got a bunch more stuff that I can cover, but I really don't want to go get into it, such as AGEs and, and animal protein, things of that nature and how it affects your kidneys and whatnot. But I think I've listed off enough substances and stuff to prove that animal products are not healthy. If anyone disagrees, then I would love to see your feedback specifically on the substances I just discussed and how they actually are healthy or beneficial for the human body because I need to move on to a few other points that Matthew Porter stated. So please feel free to list off your uh, arguments in the comment sections down below. All right, let's see here, move on to the next one. I don't agree that a plant-based diet is healthy for all people in all stages of life, especially children and to a lesser degree, the elderly. It sounds like a rebuttal to the position of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics on vegetarian diets. And this statement is directly to Matthew Porter. If Matthew, if you're watching this, if you don't think a plant-based diet is healthy for a child, then I would love to know how saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, endo, toxins, heme, iron, methionine, and a slew of other substances are good for kids or the elderly. I would also like to see some research to prove that these substances are good for them. And that doesn't just include population-based or epidemiological studies, but randomized controlled trial studies, meta-analysis, metabolic ward studies, and a general large body of scientific evidence that is at least comparable in size to the science that is presently available today, which is indicating that animal flesh is unhealthy for human consumption. Moving on to the next statement, I don't agree that plant-based dieting is better for the environment or even kills less animals. Um, I wish this statement wasn't true, but it simply isn't. Uh, there's a massive dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, primarily due to agriculture and developed land runoff coming from the Mississippi River. But let's just be honest here. Where's all that animal piss and shit going from over 9 billion animals? Don't you think that some of that is seeping into the rivers and eventually going into the ocean? I mean, it looks like it. Also, livestock contributes to 51% of all worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. So there's also that. And here's an interesting fact from the Division of Agriculture. Dairy cows eat 100 pounds of feed each day. And since 99% of animals are raised in those wonderful, happy fantasy world factory farms, they are definitely being fed food from crops, which makes sense since the majority of the crops in, of the US are used to feed livestock. Huh. Animal agriculture is responsible for murdering over 9 billion land animals in the US alone. And here's the scary part. That isn't shit compared to the worldwide numbers of fishing. Somewhere between 790 billion and 2.3 trillion fishes were caught from the wild between the years of 2007 to 2016. So I think it would be pretty safe to say that humans are definitely killing the most animals comparing to say just nature doing her thing. But I don't have the numbers on nature, so I'm just guessing here. I'm gonna spitball here for a second. Go off a little off the cuff here. I'm hearing that, or I've read somewhere, random articles, that the oceans may actually be barren of fish, rid of fish within the next like 15 to 20 years. I don't think that's just nature doing her thing. I think that's humans destroying the planet, but that's my, just my guess. Could be wrong. So let's get to the conclusion here because I'm sure this video is gonna be super long already. So Matthew Porter states, I don't agree with anyone claiming to know the perfect human diet based on extremely weak archeological evidence. I actually don't know much on this subject and I kind of agree with Matthew Porter. I don't think we know the perfect human diet yet, like the absolute perfect thing. And I also don't know any actual nutritional authority that claims to know the perfect human diet based on archeological evidence either. So 
I guess we'll just leave it at that. And finally, Matthew Porter states, I don't agree that animals have rights, but I do agree that if most people, myself included, experience negative empathetic emotion towards any abject level of suffering experienced as a result of animal farming practices, it's worth reviewing and changing said practices. So Matthew doesn't agree animals have rights, but we should consider how we treat these animals before we murder them because it makes us feel bad on how we treat them before we murder them. Okay, so let's just say if I had a dog and I raised my dog, you know, the way anybody would raise a dog in a, in a very comfortable environment and uh, treated her nice and everything. And after three or four years, let's just say I decided to get hungry one day and decided to slit her throat and then chop her up into a bunch of pieces and then feed her to myself and feed her to everyone in my family. Would that be such a bad thing? Or would it be a bad thing because it would hurt someone's feelings? Or is it animal cruelty just because the government says so? I mean, what, what's wrong with eating a dog or a cat or a hamster or a parakeet? I mean, what, it's an animal, right? How is a cow, chicken, or pig any different from a dog? Why is it cruel to kill house animals or pets and not cruel to kill farm, an farm animals? Please don't say because it's necessary, because that's not true. Eating animal flesh is not necessary. If eating animal flesh is necessary, in other words, you're saying that humans are obligatory omnivores, then please explain how am I and millions around the globe surviving and thriving on a vegan diet? What are the specific nutrients found in animal flesh that can't be found in the plant kingdom and that requires us to actually eat for us to survive? What, it, what is that magical nutrient found in animal flesh? Go ahead, do some research, but I'll save you some time. There is none. There is no magical nutrient found in animal flesh that humans must consume. None. All nutrients, everything can be found in the plant kingdom. We're not physiologically designed to eat animal flesh or consume animal secretions, hence why we get sick when we eat them. Just like we're not designed to eat processed, chemically laden food that you typically find in abundance in the grocery store at your local drive through heart attack and cancer centers. Some people call them fast food joints. So if we don't need to eat animals, why are we doing it? That pretty much sums it up. I know friends and family specifically that would rather continue supporting animal cruelty because it's a minor transitionary inconvenience for them to stop exploiting animals. I mean, we're talking small potatoes here, people. Only small, simple, easy little changes that need to be made. Instead of eating a cow flesh burger, eat a bean burger. Instead of eating a beef stew, eat a bean stew. Instead of pus milk, drink any plant milk of your desire, your choice. It really isn't that difficult. So I think I've covered as much on this video as I can for now. So a question to the gentleman, Matthew Porter, and anyone else who is still on the fence about veganism, why are you still consuming animals? If you have a valid reason, please present your evidence. And by evidence, I mean a body of science and not some random industry funded population study that is designed to promote their product. So that's it for now. All links and resources will be in the description box down below. Check them out at your leisure. Make sure to do your boy a solid. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ding dong button. You know I appreciate every single one of you on the Natural Hawks. I want to thank you for watching. And please stay tuned for the next one.